You're watching The Wellness Hour, news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, what you need to know about macular degeneration, new treatment options. With us, we have an expert on this topic. He lectures about it. He's got two best-selling books on the topic. With us, we have Dr. Samuel. Dr. Samuel, Thanks. welcome to the program. Appreciate it. So you've Thanks written two books on this topic. Are they <laughs> for doctors, for patients? So you know, I always found that there's plenty of books for doctors, but there's not enough books for patients. So I really wanted the best patients guide, guide out there for, for anybody who was diagnosed with macular degeneration. So it's written for you, your family members, you know, anybody that's concerned about it. Lots of, lots of questions. So let's start with what is it, by the way, and how, you know, how many people have it, approximately? So, Macular degeneration is really a big problem. It's the number one cause of older, uh, blindness in older Americans in this country. So it is an absolute epidemic. As we're living longer, we're seeing more and more macular than ever before. What it really is is a premature breakdown of the retina. The retina is the film in our eye that allows us to see, similar to the film in a camera. Okay. And so you get a premature aging of that film, and it causes blurred vision, loss of vision. It can cause complete blindness, and it is the number one cause of blindness in this country. So uh, it's something we should all be familiar with. Is this the one thing people hate hearing that they have been diagnosed with? You know, I think... And is it like a death sentence, meaning you're going to go blind? You know, no? it's not. It's not. It used to be. 10 or 15 years ago, we didn't have any treatments. Most people with it did go blind. But nowadays, we have really? great treatments. We can slow it down. We can prevent the vision loss. And we can treat it if you do get to the worst form of macular, wet macular degeneration. OK. So somebody at home watching this, what are this, the obvious symptoms? I think you've already talked about a few, but what yeah. are they? So the, the number one symptom is that you can lose your central vision. It gets blurry. You go to the optometrist. It's not correctable. You don't have cataracts. You're kind of wondering what's going so on. So describe what that would look like or how the patients say that it looks like. So normally our vision is the clearest in the center. I mean, we see crisp. It's where we read from, write from, watch our plate, watch TV. In early macular, you start to lose color, contrast, maybe a little blurred vision in the center. As the stages go a little bit further, you start to get distortion. You can actually have a Venetian blind looks a little crooked, and that's because the retina gets growths underneath it that kind of bend the image. Okay. So, so over the years, like what was the treatment and what is the treatment now? So in the past, we had no treatments. Uh, 20 years ago, there was nothing. We barely even were able to recognize macular degeneration. Now we have vitamins that we put people on for the early form of macular. And if you go to the more advanced, which what is what we call wet macular, we use injections in the eye. Now that sounds barbaric and absolutely horrible, but done properly, you don't feel it. And those injections have really changed the course of this disease. We can now save 90% of the vision if you get to us soon enough. Is that right? So who does the diagnosing now? You know, generally macular is first picked up by your primary eye physician, either an optometrist or your general ophthalmologist. If they see it getting to a point where it's bad enough, they'll send you to somebody like me, a specialist that does more testing to really determine the stage and whether treatments are needed at that time. So backing up for a moment, for people that don't know uh, about your centers, um, you're the third largest in the United States. That's correct. So we started off as the Retina Institute of California. Uh, we were retina specialists only. And now we've uh, changed our name to acuity eye specialist, and we do everything now, top to bottom from optometry all the way to the subspecialty care, um, pediatrics, cornea, glaucoma, anything involving the eye, we take care of now. So you lecture to other ophthalmologists about some of the newer treatment options for macular degeneration. Yes, absolutely. So uh, nutrition is really important to me. Uh, vitamins we know are really important for macular degeneration. And I think that, you know, doctors today don't know enough about nutrition and how to use Western, Eastern medicine together to slow diseases. So I go around the country really talking about what we can do in our diet, what we can do with like supplements. over-the-counter supplements, is over that right? Over-the-counter supplements. Believe it or not, you know, if I told you there was a pill that you could take that would stop heart disease by one in four, you'd take it, especially yeah. if it was over the counter. That's how well vitamins work for macular degeneration. There are vitamins yeah. out there that slow down the conversion to wet macular degeneration by 25%. That's a one in four reduction by an over the counter vitamin. Nothing else does that in our world today. It's good to hear a mainstream physician talking yeah. about supplements. In, uh, in, in eye care. You know, this really started with the government. Uh, they did an AREDS study, the National Eye Institute did an AREDS study, age-related re age eye disease study, where they looked at a vitamin formulation to slow down macular degeneration. This came out about 15 years ago. We were all shocked. Nobody would have believed that it would have slowed it down as much as it did. So it's really become mainstream now to take vitamins for macular degeneration. The problem, and what I lecture on, is that not all vitamins are created equal. And if you go to your CVS store, you're going to see there's 25 different products to choose from. So we send our patients, usually a little bit elder, to the store, and we don't give them any specifics. 
and they walk in there and they're wondering what to buy. Most people will buy with their wallet, right? Okay, whatever the cheapest <laughs> whatever vitamin the cheapest is. is. The problem with iVitamins vitamins is you kind of get what you pay for, and so I have a real problem when somebody can slow down the progression of this disease. They have access to it, but they're not getting the right product. So I recommend products by specific name. My favorite vitamin out there right now is iScience Macular Health Formula. It's available in all the retail stores, Walmart, CVS, uh, Walgreens. But I send my patients with the sample and I say, this is the best vitamin on the market. You really need to be on the best and I want you to take this one. Because for example, Alcon and Bal Shalom have eight or nine different products each with different formulations for different parts. And honestly, most of them don't even follow the science that was they supported in the beginning. When somebody's been diagnosed with macular degeneration, these supplements will help slow it, stop it. Do they get a little bit of a reversal? Do they get better vision, clarity in the middle? A little bit of everything. Okay. For, so if your mother has macular degeneration, then I would put you on it to try to slow it down or to prevent it. If you have adva advanced macular degeneration, I put you on the vitamin to try to keep it from getting worse and to keep it from going to the wet form of macular degeneration. And then rarely, not often, I do have patients that take it and they improve. But it's really not designed to improve your vision. It's really designed to keep you where you are and keep you from losing more vision. So everybody over 40 should probably take it. Or over 40, 45, I usually recommend it. It's over the counter. It's good for you. And I take it. It's, you know, what's good for the eyes is good for your heart. It's good for your body. The eye is an organ just like any other organ in your body. Put something in your mouth that goes everywhere. Okay, good. So with macular degeneration, okay, so somebody's been given the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. with their optometrist, maybe they saw, now they go to the um, ophthalmologist. Mm -hmm. What are the treatment options? So the first is diagnosing uh, which stage you're in. Do you have dry macular, do you have wet macular? And those are the two broad categories that we have. Okay. If you have dry macular, I'm gonna put you on an eye vitamin, I'm gonna give you a little chart called an Amsler grid. It's, a, it's something you use at home to monitor that if there was ever a change, you get to us right away. Half the battle is getting the patients into our office to get the treatment. A lot of times they lose vision in one eye and never notice it until they just happen to cover the other eye and they say, wow, I can't see out of this. Oh, so really? it's a silent disease. So we send a monitoring tool home. Now, if you have wet macular degeneration, we're going to do some testing on you. It's called an angiogram. We inject a vegetable dye in your arm. It travels up to your eye and it shows us the blood flow. It shows us where the leaks are, where the possible leaks are. So that's something you would have done at a retina specialist's office. If you do have wet macular degeneration, we then talk about the treatment options. And right now, the best treatments are these injections in the eye. And I know that sounds horrible. Yeah. But really done right, painless. Now, the problem is they're chronic, meaning that- Like virtually painless. They're virtually painless. Okay. They're, no, they really can be painless if done right. Okay. Some people, they can hurt, but in my office- So you're my, good. You're in good. my hands, they don't <laughs> hurt. <laughs> And so, so they get this injection, so it's injection therapy. It's injection therapy, it's once a month, and it reverses. And the best way to describe it, you get a weed that grows in the cracked sidewalk, mm -hmm. uh, and that's similar to what happens in the eye. You get a, a weakness in the foundation of the retina. Instead of a weed, you get a blood vessel that grows underneath. Now, how do you kill the weed in the sidewalk? Y you can pull it, usually comes back. You can spray Roundup on it, and that's really what we're doing in the eye. We're taking a chemical that really just causes the blood vessel to regress and die. Now you know with Roundup, the weed dies, and then a couple weeks later, it kind of pops back up. It's similar, that's why we have to chronically treat these diseases every month in the eye, because we can get the blood vessels to lay down, but we can't get them to go away completely. So it's an ongoing treatment? It's an ongoing treatment. Kind of goes on forever? It can, some people go into remission for a period of time, uh, some people can go three injections and never need another one, some people, I have, I have patients that have had injections every month for seven years. Is that right? Yeah. And uh, so they pop in, they're in and out. They pop in, in and out, 30 minutes, and go home and, and we keep them And everything you sane. do, for the most part, that we're talking about today is covered by insurance. It is. Is that right? Except That's, for the supplements. Supplements are over the counter. I wish they would, you know, but unfortunately those are some pharma guidelines. But they're not but expensive. They're too. not expensive. I mean, less than a dollar a day, and, you know, a dollar a day keeps the doctor away, so it's worth it. So aside from those injections in the eye... What else can be done? There's some lasers that we do, um, not as often as we used to. And then sometimes you can have a massive bleed underneath the retina. Now that happens, we take you to the operating room, we can lift the retina up and we can remove the blood and put it back down. Not something that's done very often nowadays, but uh, there are other options. So what's the di difference between glaucoma and macular degeneration? So gl glaucoma is a disease that affects the optic nerve. The optic nerve is the kind of the hard wire that takes vision to the brain. The eye is a camera similar to digital cameras. Vision's actually in the back of our brain and how it gets there is through this optic nerve. 
Now, pressure in the eye can build up. We make fluid, and then fluid is released out of the eye. If you have that imbalance, the pressure in the eye can go up. If it goes up, we call that glaucoma, and that squeezes on the optic nerve. Now, in glaucoma, you lose the vision from the outside in, and so you lose your peripheral first, and then slowly, 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 it comes to the center, and how you go blind in glaucoma is one day you wake up and you can't see anything, wow. and that's irreversible. Uh, macular degeneration, different. Opposite, the it sounds like it's the opposite. Sounds like you the opposite. Lose. You lose the center vision, you always keep the peripheral vision in macular degeneration, but you can lose the center. Now, a, a way to think about it is put your fist up in front of your eye, and that's what it's like walking around in the world. You just don't see right there, but you can see everything around it. So it's a silent blindness, which is where people really struggle because you don't have a disability, it seems to most people. You can walk in a store, you just don't, can't recognize your friend's face. You can't read your mail, you can't see the plate, you can't see your food. So it's really a tough disease and it leads to a lot of depression, a lot of anxiety, yeah. a lot of loss of independence because you can't keep your driver's license either. Does it usually happen in one eye or both? At the you know, same both, time? both eyes are affected. Uh, one eye can progress at a different rate than the other. So you can get wet in one eye and be dry in the other, but usually they progress at the same rate. For those people that you described, okay, so it's, it's pretty blurry in the middle mm -hmm. or maybe even blocked. With the injection therapy, with the supplements, do they get a reversal of that? Do they get, does that ever get better? Or once they're at a certain point, it stops there? Once they've lost the central vision completely, it's hard to bring it back. Now, I did talk a little bit about our research. And one of the things that I'm most proud about is five years ago, we did the first delivery of stem cells underneath the retina to try to bring back vision in people who had lost their central vision. It's a project that we've been working with the corporate sponsor for a long time. To date, we've done about 48 patients. And I'm excited at the prospect that we may someday be able to bring back vision to people who have lost it. But right now, most of the vision that's lost, once it's gone, it's gone, which is why it's so important to really prevent the vision loss and something that I believe is a preventable disease. So early treatment. So, so Early treatment. So at what stage then, because most of this is diagnosed by the optometrist. It is. So people are waiting and waiting and waiting until they, they're saying, hey, I can't, my, my vision is yes. going bad in the middle. You know, I think that the key is, um, get to your eye care, ask the questions. Do you see any macular degeneration? Do you see any cataracts? And do you see any glaucoma? Those are really the three big ones. If they see any signs of that, then think about seeing a specialist uh, further up. Again, what we know about macular is 70% 70, 70 of it is inherited. So if your mother and father had it, or if you have some relatives that have it, go see a specialist and see if you have it. I generally can look at anybody's eye, at least after 55, and tell you whether you're gonna get macular or if you have no chance of getting it. Is that right? Because there's usually gonna be some signs of it at that point. So I look in a 65-year-old's eye and she says, my mother is blind from macular. I can look in and say, you're not getting it. 100% chance you're not getting it. That's how good our technology is now and our ability to read the retina. Is that right? And with the supplements, with your protocol, mm -hmm. you could stop it. I think so. I mean, you've seen it? I've seen it. So at your center, mm -hmm. uh, you, you take all insurances. We take all insurances. Medicare covers Medicare, this. Medi-Cal. What about somebody in the military, like a VA? We, do, we, we see plenty of VA patients as well. Oh, really? Okay. Yep. So the VA, you know, because of they, they got so busy recently that they started outsourcing a lot of their care to private providers. And so we've been one of those groups that have been fortunate enough to see the, our veterans and take care of them for the last couple of years. So we welcome all our veterans. So this is one of the things, obviously, look, you know, this is a big topic, mm -hmm. but the supplements, early detection, I mean, this is your thing. I mean, this, this is, is our thing. You know, it's, it's, it's our eyes, and we really have to take care of our eyes. I mean, you can lose a hand, you can use a finger, but when you lose your vision, you lose your independence, you lose your ability to drive, your ability to live like you normally would have. And so the eyes are unique, unlike anything else on the body. And so it, really a lot of em emphasis on prevention and saving your vision is what I believe in. And these consultations don't cost money. I mean, so they might as well go in, get a second opinion. Yep. And now do they need to get a referral from their optometrist or could they go to you directly? They can go to us directly. Yep, Acuity Eye Specialist is our name of our group and our number is 1-800-898-2020. And um, call us anytime and, and you have see this, one of our And you have this concept where it's, it, it, you do everything, like all the specialists are under one roof. That's right. We started off as a retina specialty group only and what we realized was we had a lot of other diseases that needed to be treated, and why not best to treat them in one group where we can all communicate together? You know, the eye is such a small organ, but it actually has seven different specialists for just that small organ. Is that and that right? tells you how intricate it really is. There's not seven specialists for the entire neck to the 
abdomen, but for the eye, there's that many. So we brought them all under one, one roof. What, what are their frequently asked questions? Like on the consult, what do they want to know? So somebody, get, let's say they already have a, a diagnosis from their optometrist or, or, or whatever. You know, I think most people want to know, am I going to lose my vision? Am I going to go blind? I get that question more than anything else. Am I going to go blind? And I say, as long as you keep coming in and seeing me, we'll make sure you see the rest of your life. And that's something I can generally promise people if we can catch it early enough, we can get to it early enough. So there's dry and wet. It starts out dry. It starts out dry. It can convert to wet. The vitamins slow it down by about 25%. Some other lifestyle modifications, maybe you can reduce it by about 50%. So that's huge in itself. Two, if they get to us quickly, if there is a problem, that conversion to wet, that distortion, sudden change in their vision with macular, if they get to us, we start treatment, we can save them 90% of the time. I guess a couple symptoms I want to ask you about. Flashes and floaters. Mm -hmm. This is what they call what? So flashes, of, flashes and floaters is really one of the most common things we see in our office. Flashes are where you see a, a strobe light go off in your eye. And floaters, we all tend to get floaters in our eye, the little dark spots that move around in our vision as we get older. It's part of the natural aging process. There's a vitreous jelly that takes up most of the space in the eye. When you're young, it's like jello in the freezer. And as you get older, I say it's like jello on a hot sunny day. It liquefies, it collapses. When it does that, it gets these little clumps in it. Now, floaters alone are generally not a problem. Sudden onset of new floaters sometimes can mean that you tore your retina. The jelly collapses, it pulls on the retina, and it bleeds into the eye. Flashing, the retina doesn't feel pain, it doesn't sense pain, all it does is see light. Remember poking your eye as a kid? Yeah. You'd yeah. see flash, you know, a firework go off. If you pull on it or push on the retina, you get a flash of light. So sudden onset of flashing lights or floaters is really an emergency and something that we want to see. Now, by the way, th th this, this flashing, does it happen like a lot or is it in intermittent? It can come all over the place. Sometimes it is just a, a little flash at night. You only, most people notice it only in a dark room. It's going on throughout the day, but we just don't see it because of like the it's ambient just a light. Flash out of the it's just a flash out of the blue. Some people see a firework go off in their eye at night or in their bedroom. Wow. If that happens, call your retina specialist the next day. Because pretty, something is putting pressure. Something's pulling on your retina. And if it pulls hard enough, it can tear the retina. And if you tear the retina, that's the first step to a retinal detachment. Now, retinal detachments are something that I take care of. It's a serious surgery. It's a serious condition. It can lead to permanent blindness. So it's preventable. And the downtime. And the downtime is tough because you're... Can't travel in an airplane and no high altitudes, and this is often for months. This is one of those things that, in your opinion, is pre preventable. Preventable again. Where yeah. you don't have to get to that detached retina you, phase. You don't have to get to that so detached. So if you see the little... Little flashes, little floaters. Does it all happen like, does it start where it happens maybe here and there, maybe under a stressful condition, you see the flashes, or does it it's tend random. to start? It's random. It can happen with a traumatic event. So if you get in a fight or if you get hit in a car accident, sometimes that can be the inciting event. Most people just come in, they notice it on their own, they go to the internet and they read about flashes and floaters and it's called a vitreous separation and it's the number one risk factor for a retinal detachment. So a lot of people who go and look on the computer will get to us, um, but those who are just listening right now and saying, hey, I see some flashing lights, I see some floaters, that's something that should be looked at. So the floaters are little debris that kind of floats around. And in you actually vision. see this. Patients can see it, can be bothersome. Now, in some patients, you just have a premature breakdown of that vitreous jelly, and they're so bothered by the floaters. There's a surgery we can do to remove those. It's not something we do very often, but there's a safe way to remove floaters in some patients who are so bothered by them that they just can't, you know. T tell me this then, are, are, like anything else, do people maybe see their fierce flash, then they wait it out, right? Yep. Hoping it's gonna go away, and then they see a, you know, some of these floaters, and then they wait, and then they wait until it becomes more of a problem. Yep. Or they Google it, then they get scared, then mm -hmm. they go see you. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people come in when it's too late. And so we see, you know, four or five retinal detachments a week where they really? said, and they'll tell you, you know, two weeks ago, I saw some flashes, I saw some floaters, and then it went away, and then I started to see this, and then I didn't call in time. So unfortunately, it's so one of the things. in two months, that could happen. In two weeks, it can happen. In two days, it can happen. I mean, you can tear the retina and you could detach within 24 hours, or it could, could come slowly over a period of a few weeks. So if you see those signs, if you see those symptoms, don't put it off. Because Is that right? So it's yeah. not something that you could have a flash or floater for a, a year or so? Doubtful. So these are things that happen right away and you go in quickly because something is now pushing on 
or pulling on the retina. It's, it's one of the true- Like a blood vessel? It's one of the true emergencies I say it with your eyes. If you see flashes and floaters, you really should get in and be seen. Is it a fluid backup or is it a No, it's just that, that, that jelly is pulling okay. and it gets a little hung up on the retina. Normally the jelly separates from the retina naturally, but in some cases it just gets a little stuck. And that's really genetic, it's bad luck, it's the way you were born, and if it just pulls too hard, the retina's paper thin, so it can And you drain easily. it, you drain it out of there, or what? what, so what part of the surgery is we go inside the eye, and it's like putting back the wallpaper. You just push it up against, you laser around the tear, and then you fill the eye up with a gas bubble. The gas bubble acts like a cast. If you break your arm, you get a cast for six months. Similar concept. How soon does it all go away? I mean, what is the downtime? For when somebody uh, flashes, flashes, well, floaters. so if you, if you have flashes and floaters, you're going to come in. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to look look around. We're, if there's no tear, we recheck in a couple of weeks until the symptoms subside. And eventually the flashes should go away. If we look inside the eye and we see a tear, a tear can be usually be fixed in the office, outpatient, nothing to it. We just laser around the tear and that's done. Unfortunately, if we see a tear and it's led to a detachment or fluid has gotten into that tear, and kind of pulled off the retina, that usually is a surgical fix, and that's something that has to go to the operating room. But it's outpatient surgery, painless, something we do routinely. Okay, now these supplements, is this something you offer in your office, or you send them out? We send them out. Okay. It's, uh, they're available at all the drugstores, CVS, Walmart, uh, online, but iScience, iScience.com, it's my favorite one. And All right. Are, are, are there a lot of people, by the way, with macular degeneration in the desert? I mean, what's an estimate, like thousands? Uh, tens of thousands. In, in just the desert? Yeah, it's really, you know, an area like the Coachella Valley where it's a retirement community, a lot of snowbirds come in. Um, we definitely find more macular there than we see in other communities. Um, so it's, you know, the community kind of swells to about 500,000. I'd say it's in the tens of thousands there. And there's a lot of people that are just doing nothing. They're just kind of sitting on they, it? They just don't know. They really don't know. I mean, every week, 10, 20 times I may tell a patient they have macular degeneration, they're shocked. They say, I've been having my eyes checked for years. It really? And they say, they'll say, it must have just come up. And I say, no, macular is a really slow disease. There were signs of it there. And this is what we do as specialists. We're able to detect things a little bit sooner. Is that right? So you work with the optometrist in the desert. Absolutely. I mean, you guys work together. Yes. Most of, most of the patients come to me through referrals from optometrists or general ophthalmologists. I always joke, nobody wakes up and says they're going to see Dr. Samuel this morning. Nobody right. knows Dr. Samuel exists until they have a retina problem. Yeah. And then they get to us. So most of the time they come to us from other eye care How providers. How is it misdiagnosed, though? I mean, aren't they looking at the eye? They do. It's, you know, I think it's experience, and I think it's just familiarity. And a lot of it's equipment. We have testing that is really high-resolution cameras that are allow, right. allow us to see things that you can't see on some standard equipment. And so not every, you know, optometrist really focus on glasses, contact lenses, early glaucoma, and other diseases. Op ophthalmologists focus on glaucoma, cataract surgery, and this is all we do as retina specialists. I live and breathe macular degeneration and diabetes, so we get familiar with it. Now, b by the way, for people that have been given the diagnosis, mm -hmm. and maybe they're getting the injections, right, elsewhere or whatever, these are people, in your opinion, everybody should be on these supplements. Absolutely. Because you say there's two studies that, that proved that it works. Two studies that showed that it worked uh, so successfully that a few years ago, Medicare made sure we recommended it and put in the chart that we recommended for every person. And let me tell you why. Say the vitamins are $25 a month. The injections that we inject into the eye, the medicines we inject in the eye, are $2,000 a month. So you could be on vitamins for seven years to pay for the cost of one injection. And right now, we inject people every month. But for insurance the covers the injections. It does. But in terms of a cost savings to society and a health benefit to our healthcare system, it's why it's important. It slows down disease. Do you have anecdotal stories where a patient starts taking the supplements, things like that, and they're reporting a reversal? Has you that know, ever happened? You know, I've had, you know, so we, we live in a golf community, and yeah. I love golf, and so I hear from all the golfers, and I've had a couple of them say I've improved their putting, putting game, you know, with the, with the supplements. You know, a lot of people find out that they have wet macular degeneration on the golf course because either they lose the ball after they hit it and it goes into one of the blind spots, one of the areas that's bleeding, or when they're putting, they can't see the, the, the line that they're supposed to putt. And so they'll come in and they'll say, I just, I'm having trouble. And then I say, you have macular degeneration, we treat it, and I don't know if I'm making better golfers, but I improved their view. <laughs> is that right? Well, because, you know, I'm in the, I'm in the desert at 75, 80 is very young. They're playing tennis. Right. They're, they're golfing, they're hiking, mm -hmm. and, and if your vision's starting to go away, is, is it because it's hard to detect? They just think, well, it's part of aging, I'm just you know, yeah, losing I, my vision a little bit. 
You know, I think it's it's a combination of everything. But if it's in the middle blurry. If it's in the middle blurry or you see a distortion or things aren't straight, that's something you need to call right away. But people that are wearing glasses and mm -hmm. people that have contacts, don't they know this, that you're in trouble if you have the middle part blurry? Randy, you'd be surprised. We really, ha we really have a way of kind of... Uh, denying things that our body sometimes tries to tell us. I mean, listen, how many, how many times have you heard a story of somebody having chest pain for months yeah. and then they have a heart attack? Don't you think they would know that their you know, left arm is numb, that their chest is hurting, that they can't climb the stairs? This is part of the problem we have to do. We have to educate our patients on their early signs and just try to push them to come is in sooner. Is there an easy at-home test? That you can you can download you can something called an people? Amsler grid, which is something you can download off the internet. It's just a grid. It has just lots of squares, and then you stare at it with one eye, really close, and everything should be straight. If you're missing spots or there's something crooked, that's something that would make you want to come in right away. That's good. That's good. So if somebody wants uh, a second opinion, call our office. Happy to see them. I do them a lot, all the time. Yep. And uh, what what's the biggest misconception about macular degeneration? that you're gonna go blind, and that there's no treatment for it. There's yeah. plenty of treatment, and most likely you, you won't go blind. I have an aunt, aunt, by the way, and she has it, and uh, my father told me, yeah, she's just gonna go blind. Anyway, I ended up talking to her, and she says, oh yeah, it's just, it's just gonna get worse. It's just the way it is. Yeah. And she's doing nothing. <laughs> now she's just kind of her. waiting it out, right? right? Well, I'm gonna talk to her, actually, about Good. this. So this is, now when I talked to you, you were on the show before, mm -hmm. and we were talking about retina and things like that, but you're much bigger on supplements because the proof is in, I guess. The proof is in. You know, there was, there was the AREDS original study, and that kind of told most of us. The AREDS 2 again proved it. So now you have two, two studies that our National Institutes of Health have spent about $75 million to answer these questions. And they've run about 15 to 18 years long. So there's a lot of evidence that we really can be doing a lot more. Are there people that, res because one of the treatment options is injections in the eye, mm -hmm. and they shouldn't hurt, okay, if done right. Right. Now, are there a lot of people that say, say I'm just not going to do that? I've had that happen. I talk them into it because I say... Does it happen a lot, really? It, you know, I think... Because it's a, their vision. And, and it, It's fear of the unknown. And it, honestly, if somebody came at me with a needle my, towards my eye, I'd probably run. But I think you just have to tell them, listen, you got to trust me. The first one, it's going to be painless. And then they kind of get used to it. You'll be surprised. But it's not a fun thing to so anticipate. Of, you said that there's like tens of thousands of people in the desert... Mm -hmm with macular degeneration. Of those 10,000, when you're talking about, are those people that don't know they have it? And they have it? I'd, I'd say two thirds probably don't know they have the early forms of macular degeneration. Really, and it's just, and, and so you can't bring that vision back, so you gotta grab yeah. it, get it Now the soon. good thing is the early form doesn't really cause a lot of vision loss, but that's the, that's the part where you can prevent it the most. So you wanna catch it early to prevent the further vision loss. So we're out of time. Uh, great info. Final message to somebody that uh, may have some of these symptoms or they're resistant to supplements. Two things I can tell you. One, if you have diabetes, please get your eyes checked yearly. If not by me, by somebody. And if you have any concern about macular degeneration, come in and be checked sooner rather than later. Okay, good. I want to thank you for coming on the show. Thank you Excellent. very much. You've been watching The Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez for now. I wish you could help. Thanks for watching The Wellness Hour. The leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.